You're watching Greater Brockton Special Candidates Edition. We're heading into the November 7th general election here in the City of Champions, and we have a, a new candidate to show you, a familiar face to Brockton, Angel Cosme. Hi. How, How are, are you, you Angel? Good to see you. Good to see you. You've been an activist. You've been very involved in Brockton through Brockton Interfaith Community. You are, uh, you are an educator. You work in the Brockton Public Schools, yes. and now you want to be an elected city councilor. Yes. Tell us, tell us why. Sure, I, I feel like I've been, um, trying to say this humbly, sort of groomed, if you will, to um, become a, a city councilor based on the experiences that I've had throughout my years, both professionally, civically. Um, I've been, as you said, an educator for the last six years. Uh, during one of those years, I took a year off and became a community organizer, associate community organizer for Brockton Interfaith Community. Mm -hmm. um, I've run mayoral, uh, what well, one particular mayoral uh, election a couple of years ago, taken tons of political courses, um, and I've, I've just always been in the last maybe 10 years an advocate for social justice, and so this would allow me an opportunity to continue that, but on another level of creating change and, and trying to better collectively, not because of anything, any one thing that I will do, but collectively with the community um, and other elected officials to really bring the changes that we need to see here in Brockton. So you're running for the Ward 2 City Council seat. Correct. Current councilor is Tom Monahan. Yes. Um, what do you have to offer different than what Tom brings to the table? Okay. What, what, would, you, what would you consider your strength or your, um, you know, your advantage, I guess? Sure, sure. For, first and foremost, uh, I respect Tom, and, and uh, he's, a, he's a great guy and, and loves the city, just like I do. And uh, I have the utmost respect for Tom. Uh, what I feel that, that I bring that, that he doesn't is um, perhaps a diversity of perspectives and experiences. Uh, as an educator, I've also been a former clinician. Um, I've worked on um, you know, teen uh, counseling um, at Unlimited Behavioral Health. Uh, I've worked as a substance abuse counselor at um, High Point at the Section 35 unit. Um, I'm in the schools. I'm a father of a 15-year-old, so youth, uh, you know, youth engagement, youth empowerment, Youth issues are important to me for many reasons as an educator and as a father, um, a community organizer working on an array of issues, educational, criminal justice, reform, immigration rights. Um, so all of those experiences uh, really allow me a, a diverse lens. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, a person who values diversity and Brockton is very diverse and I feel that Ward 2 is uh, extremely diverse in terms of um, the immigrant population that's there. Um, and so I'm not saying that I am all encompassing of all the diversity that is in Ward 2, but I've been, um, you know, sensitive to the marginalization of certain communities, um, not just based on race, but um, the, the ignored folks in the ward. Um, I'm talking about the elderly, the veterans, and I just want to reach out and, and, and represent all of those, um, you know, constituents. Um, and I feel that, I, that my educational experiences and my professional and my volunteer experiences allow me the opportunity to have that sort of advantage or that perspective. Um, and and uh, I have a lot of integrity and I'd like to, to, to work extremely hard. Um, not that Tom doesn't, but I, I, I do a lot and, and I think my, my track record has shown that. And, and it's not just running for office at this time, I've been doing it for years and, uh, I, and I can speak about that and I think the community knows that. Now you were directly affected by the city budget this year. Yes. At one point when all the layoffs happened in the school department, you were laid off. Yes, personally. This is right about the time that I think you decided to run for I council. Did. And if you were still laid off, you'd have all the time in the world to do it. Both right. both of you have full full time jobs. Tom yes. does too. So talk about that. Talk about the city councilor gets the budget. They get it from the mayor. They don't prepare it. They they can only cut it. Right. But having had that experience would that give you insight into the budget process or, 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 or be able to advocate for the budget? Again, the council doesn't build the budget, as you know. The mayor builds the budget. Right. But talk about that experience and how it impacted you and, and what your thinking is on yeah, budgeting. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So um, I, I was one of over 100 teachers that were uh, laid off. Uh, I made an announcement to run for office after much thought. And... Um, the very next day that I made the announcement, I was recalled. And so I had a decision to make whether or not I continue with my, with my bid for City Council Ward 2. Um, and I decided that I, that I do want to do that. But, but during the time that I consider being in limbo, if you will, 
Um, I figured I have the whole summer off. This is an issue that's, that's personal to me. Um, it's an issue that keeps occurring, and uh, I wanted to do something about it. And, and you're right, I do have some restrictions, um, uh, not only as, a, as an educator, but uh, I do want to sort of speak on that. I have very specific restrictions as a public employee, and so I, I am not allowed to um, solicit donations, and, and uh, I'm not allowed, obviously, to use public resources. Join the club, I have the same issue. I, yes. I'm a state employee from Massasoit. So. I, yep. And, and so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to um, collect the salary on the, on the city council. That's another restriction. Um, I just recently received uh, from, from the teachers union a legal opinion based on what I could and can't do. And I think it's very important for me to articulate that at some point, perhaps through a press release, so that I'm clear and so that the community's clear on what I could and, and can't do uh, given my public em employee status. That said, as an educator, education is near and dear to my heart. Absolutely. I, I am in solidarity with those educators. I'm, I'm fortunate to have been called back, but there's educators who are not. Um, and so whatever I could do within the legal limits, I am absolutely willing to do. I want to I wanna, uh, make sure that we prioritize education in the city and that we take care of our teachers, but most importantly, the, the, the students that we serve. Okay. Now I'm looking on here and I see something that I see on every brochure for everyone running for Ward 2 and everyone running for Ward 5. Okay. Revitalize the downtown. Yes. We're sitting in the downtown. We've been here, BCA, since 1994. Actually, we were here longer than that. We've been in all four corners down over here. Okay. Downtown needs help. Yes. Okay, and it's not any one individual. It's kind of team Brockton. It, it, it goes from the mayor, the planning department, the city council to have a vision. How do you see us revitalizing the downtown with a, with a, with a different set of eyes? Yes, yes. So I, I have a 15-year-old son, and he all the time he tells me, Dad, Brockton is boring. Brockton, there's nothing to do in Brockton. Um, when I first came to, to Brockton, I've been here since uh, I'm not a lifelong Brockton resident, but this is the first the first uh, city that I've lived in that I felt at home, that I've been extremely active in. Um, so I've been here since 2004, and, and there was a movie theater um, that was just leaving when I came here. We don't, we don't have a movie theater. I, I've heard um, administration say that the reason we don't have a movie theater is because it's not profitable. And while I want Brockton to be pro profitable, we need to have opportunities for our youth. And, and I, I envision a downtown that is lively, that is um, family oriented with restaurants. Um, we, we need to have outdoor venues for people to sit at. And I know there's some restrictions in that. Let's work, let's work around that. Um, we need to have youth activities and, and just um, work collaboratively with, with the business community, the elected officials to, to bring some businesses in, in here that, that can make Brockton prosperous, but at the same time, give the residents something to do that is exciting. Um, I often hear uh, of the glory days of Brockton, and, and um, I, I believe that we could bring that back in, in a different way, in a, in a sort of a, a more modern, modern way. Um, one thing that sort of relates to the downtown area is this issue of, of homelessness. And, mm -hmm. and I want to speak about that because I, um, first and foremost, uh, value human beings. And, and, and I love people, plain and simple. And I, I feel that the first thing that we need to do is have compassion for individuals that are at their lowest. And I understand that Ward 2 in particular has a huge homeless crisis. Um, and we need to help them. But at the same time, we need to help them to help themselves. And so that's a collective effort. And I think, you know, I've heard it said that um, aesthetically it's unappealing to businesses to want to come to downtown because of this homeless issue. And while that may or may not be true, arguably, um, I feel like we need to do more. We don't have such a, such a huge homelessness problem like other cities. And so if we collectively put our resources into addressing that, I'm working with Pastor Roberto from the Homelessness Improvement uh, Project to uh, address that, that issue. I, I, we have a lot of uh, abandoned buildings here in Brockton. We could utilize some of those. And so um, that would be one way to, to address this downtown issue. Um, but I'm all for prospering downtown, bringing in new businesses. If we do that, more people would want to live here. We increase the tax base and, and we'd have more revenue. Um, how to do that? It, it takes every single one of us. But, but I totally envision a place that is exciting and fun and prosperous and um, family oriented in the downtown area. We don't have that. I will work with everyone else who's willing to do that with a lens on compassion. Are you encouraged by the fact that the city on the 2nd of October have a place now where people can go? They, they, they just opened like almost a center over near the Haitian Church of God 
right over here on Pleasant Street, and they're going to start doing some day services yes. with volunteers and stuff like that. Is that what you're talking about? The, the concept in and of itself is, is excellent. You know, while homeless individuals have that sort of time where they have to leave the shelter, they, they, they need services. And so um, that, that's great. At the same time, um, and this is where it gets tricky, there, there, are, there are businesses, small business owners, um, who are concerned about the, the location of it. And I, I want to be sensitive to the business needs of the community, the business owners. And at the same time, I want to be compassionate to those individuals that are receiving the services. And we need to, we need to compromise sometimes. We can't get it all. We can't, we can't please everyone. No one elected official is going to make every single decision that is going to please everybody. But, but I think if we are open and transparent about our decision-making process, if we involve the public opinion, which I'm not sure to what extent that was done, and I don't think enough of it was, was done, uh, and then if we take all of that information and make a decision and we're open and transparent about it, uh, I, I don't think the public can fault us for, for making those decisions. And, and I don't know if that happened in this particular case, okay. but the concept in and of itself is excellent. We need, we need that for, right. for that population. I got the three minute cue, you get the bulk of the three minutes. So before I forget, website, phone number, email, Facebook, how do people get in touch with you? You can talk right directly sure, to the sure. audience, forget that I'm here sure, at the moment. Sure. So uh, if you want to learn more about my campaign, the, the one thing that, well, there's a couple of things that you could do. The Facebook page is probably the most active. I post on that every single um, day, practically. Um, it's elect Angel Cosme for Brockton Ward 2 City Councilor. Um, I have a website. It's angelcosme.org. My phone number is 617-512-5305. And on, on the uh, Facebook page, uh, just to show how active I've been throughout the community, every now and again I have a feed that pops up that says on this day, five years ago today, four years ago today. And you'll see, and I, I post these as they come up, that I've been an advocate for criminal justice reform, for education reform, for immigrant rights. I, I, I believe in social justice. I believe in helping marginalized populations. I believe in, in, in helping every single person um, who needs help in this. In this uh, it's not just about uh, economics or prosperity. It's about the individual humanistic connection in a, in a society where we are faced with tragedies like Las Vegas, um, issues of natural disasters like Puerto Rico, which has personally affected me and others in this community, which by the way, Puerto Ricans are uh, the number one in terms of population, Latino subgroup in, in Brockton. So um, there's a lot that we need to do. We need more compassion. We need to help one another. I'm going to be that voice on the city council that advocates for social justice, for equality, uh, based out of love for humanity. And so if that resonates with voters, I ask humbly for your vote on November 7th. You can look me up um, uh, on, on those uh, mediums, angelcosme.org or on the Facebook page. Angel, um, out on the campaign trail, real quick, I think I have one minute. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. What's the number one issue you hear about when you're out there knocking door to door? Probably public public safety okay. um, concerns about uh, the safety of, of, of Brockton and the shootings and the and the violence and, and with that said I feel like we also need on the flip end sort of a youth prevention um, mechanism we need Corey reform we need opportunities for youth we need to value education and create educational opportunities so we're going to talk about that hopefully when we get the two candidates together in a, in a debate would love to thanks for putting your name Thank on you, the Mark. ballot and Thank you, sir. Uh, glad you came in glad to be here. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more election coverage on Brockton Community Access, channels 9, 12, and maybe even 98. Have a good evening.